Hey, I'm Sophie Kay, and this is Not Fest at Wacken 2022. I'm Sophie Kay, we're here at the most metal festival in the world with one of the greatest metal bands in the world, Amon Amoth. Hello. 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 Today is an exciting day. I know this is coming out a little bit later on, but the Great Heathen Army is out. Yes. How does it feel to finally have that record out there? Fantastic. Yeah, it feels great. How yeah. long have you been? What's the lead up been? How long have you been working on it? I, I, I don't know. We started working on the songs about a year and a half ago or something like that, right? Yeah, I worked more two years ago. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Some of that. But some, sometime during the pandemic, we said, well, let's start working on a new album. And, uh, and then we, you know, you have all that stuff. You pass the the sound, the, the the music back and forth, and you do the vocals and and try to put everything together. And then when it comes together, you're like, oh, this is awesome. And but then when it's recorded, you have this wait, you know, until you can release it to people. But yeah, we feel really good about it. Do you both go on social media and check like what people been saying or read yeah, reviews? Yeah, totally. Yeah, today we released a new video for the uh, find a way or make one. And I instantly go in and read all the comments on YouTube and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I, I'm, I'm not really good with social media, but I, I, I go in a little bit. But, I, I, you know, it's it's so much, you know, you can't waste your day with hanging out there. So, you know, no, of course. Especially not when Wacken is going on, you know. <laughs> no, it's an amazing festival. It's, it's sunny, it's beautiful, lots yeah. of metal. You played yesterday. Yes. You, it was, do you know what? I watched, um, I watched the set. And it was amazing because you just had the audience by their jewels. <laughs> you, just, you had them there and yes. they were just captured. And as soon as they, you were just telling them what to do and they were there. Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, it, I, I, told the, I told the guys, it, it didn't feel like we've been, not been doing this for two and a half years. It's like back to normal and you come out and you see this odd audience. They're like, holy crap, I missed this, you know? So yeah, it was uh, it was uh, it was brilliant. You know, we had it's such a great time, and uh, it was so much fun to be up there as well. Such a weird place to play as well because you're like, I don't know, 20 meters up in the air. Yeah. So it's like you have this view over the whole thing, which is amazing. You don't really get that from the normal stages, right? So it's crazy. And you were in between two stages, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, and it was very windy up there too. It was, yeah. it was hard to headbang the That's hair. That's metal. Like yeah, just like, yeah. I want to know what love is. Exactly. Yeah, we, had, we, we all had like, the, what, what was that band called? The two brothers from the 90s or 80s? Like, uh, Nelson. <laughs> oh, yeah. That yeah. little, yeah. Side. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> the comb over hair, dude. Yeah. It, was, it was an amazing set. The audience were loving it. And essentially, because I wanted to ask you, because for you, that was, I mean, how many people did you have on stage? I mean, like, uh, yeah, before, in front of the stage. The yeah, Vikings. in front of stage, all your Vikings. Yeah, it was like 80 people, so 40 on each side. And for you, that's kind of a stripped back show, right? <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did it feel weird not playing with all the extras that you do normally have? Um, not really. I mean, it, we knew what it was. You yeah. know, We knew we didn't really have any production or anything. So for us, it was just go up there and, and do our bit and try to do the best of the situation. You know, uh, obviously when you're that far up and the, the, the railing is really low as well, so you don't want to do too much in case really? you stumble, you know. <laughs> oh my God, that must be really scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was totally possible to flip over that oh, fence yeah, if you... Yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah. Yeah, it could have happened if you, if you wow. weren't careful, but yeah, it went fine. Wow. I have a bit of... I mean, fear of heights as well. So, you know. oh, well, you held it together so yeah. well. You couldn't tell. I would have been freaking it out. Good. It was good. It was it was an amazing show. Um, it was streamed live as well. One of the questions, some of the questions that we did want to ask you about are questions that we've been asking quite a variety of bands. And I wanted to ask you if you could sum up the band in one movie in history. <laughs> what movie would you think represents Amon Amath? One movie. Brave, brave heart was brave the first, yeah. the first one I, that came to mind for me. Actually, the, the first one that came to mind for me is 300. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, but it's like, it's like, it's it's been our career basically. It's just like 
never stopping no matter what yeah. we faced you know like it, it could be like setbacks or whatever we just keep going has there know? been a time where you were like i'm not sure we can continue with this we had we had one time in our career where we were like right this this will be our last album and we said let's let's do if it, it doesn't work yeah but we we were pretty much like all right this is going to be the last time we even we even had like the, the the album name was the end wow and uh then we felt so good about the songs and we actually played her at vac and we played one of the new songs and we knew that we had to do this and wow. continue to doing this uh but that was uh then the album became versus the world instead but it was it was just you know one of those moments where you go like all right do we do this now or do we continue doing this or but yeah that would uh, that would be the big moment so yeah this is why i listen to you in the gym <laughs> that motivation yeah um so what have you got at the moment um planned going forward shows wise because you've got some in the uk with machine head right yeah yeah we do a european uh, run co-headlining with Ma machine head yeah uh in uh, september october that would be good. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then through, after that we go to the States and Canada and do, we have Carcass uh, Obituary and uh, Cattle Decapitation on that tour. Yeah. It's, it's nice. I don't know, it's exciting for us as fans of the music to watch you back out on tour, all bands back out on tour. But am I right in saying these those two years off during COVID are probably the only break you've ever taken in... <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's interesting though because in in a way it didn't it wasn't really a break. The only thing that was different for us is that instead of going off tour having like three four months break before we start writing a new album, we had maybe like eight to twelve months. You know. Okay. So yeah, so that's the only difference for us. But I think I think what really threw us off with the pandemic was that we couldn't finish touring the previous album. Yeah. But. I mean, it is what it is. You know, everybody had to adjust with stuff, right? So, mm. yeah. Do you know what? It's nice as well talking to you and hearing how happy you are to be here at Vakken. Oh, yeah. And what does this festival mean to you? Actually, I think uh, Oli said it really well yesterday. Vakken is, is sort of a second home for us in, in a way. The first time we played here was in 1999. Was it really? Yeah. And that's wow. the first... You look too young to have been going yeah. that long. But that was the first year they had the twin stages like this, set up like this. Ah, oh, yeah. And we played one of the main stages at like 12:30 in in like in the like afternoon, wow. right? But we've never played any of the small stages here. We always played one of those two big stages. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so for us, it, it it is kind of a home, like coming yeah. home festival. You know, we've been here so many times. And your audience are out there. They're having the best Vakken, time. So happy to see. Amazing audience. Always great audience here at Vakken. So yeah, it's it's a, it's a special feeling coming here. And very quickly, I just wanted to ask you about um, writing the the first track on the album for Eric Redbeard. Can you tell me a little bit about the story behind that? Because Eric's <laughs> a friend of yours, isn't he? You know the story. Ben. All right, all right. Yeah. So uh, Eric approached us about two years ago. Uh, two and a half years ago or something like that to, if if we could write a a, a walk-in song for him and we said sure we, we'll do that did you know him at that time yeah yeah we knew oh. him uh, because uh, we knew of him from actually the first time we heard of him is he did a like a wrestling match wearing an Amram Marth jersey and then we met him in Costa Rica because we were having a show and we when we flew into the show he also came to the airport because he was there with WWE for an event. So they did, they did their stuff and they came to the show later. So we hung out, you know, and had a few beers and stuff. And um, yeah, so, and then he, he was in the videos for, for the previous album we did as well. So he asked us if we could do like a walk-in song for him and we said, sure. Um, but we, we didn't want to do like a, 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 any old, so just put something together. We wanted to like a, write a proper song that could fit on an Amon Amarth album. So, oh yeah, uh, watch out for Wasps. the Wasps. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me freaking out yeah, then, yeah, my yeah. eyes are like, I don't want to get stung. <laughs> so, no, so, so, um, so when this song came along, we immediately knew that this was a perfect song for, for, for him, you know? And then it was just a matter of coming up with the lyrics and 
I had this idea of making uh, making the, the like a this Viking phenomena of the Holmgong or Tria Kamp, which is like a, a duel basically, which is either fought to first blood or death. You know, so it's like. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it really fits well with the wrestling phenomena as well. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so just to finish up, one of the things that we have been talking about here at Knotfest and with TikTok on the rise and there's a lot of people getting into metal and coming who are new to metal and then there's a lot of the people who have been into metal for a long time and they're saying to the new people that either women can't get into metal or people of colour can't like metal and there's a lot of gatekeeping happening. Do you, what's your opinion on gatekeeping? It's just bullshit. <laughs> it's a B, that's a B. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just a B, it's just a B. I know, I'm yeah, just, I'm yeah, not, yeah. that was the most <laughs> uncool thing. No, but gatekeeping is bullshit. Yeah. I, I think it's bullshit, you know? I mean, the metal, for me, the metal community has always been a welcoming community. Yeah. Always. You know, we're out, we are outsiders. But we are outsiders because we're cool with people. If you want to come and hang out and have a good time, fuck hell, I don't care where you come from. Yeah. You know, it's it's um, it's stupid. You know, like, like not everyone can discover metal like in 1975. <laughs> yeah. you know? And have a full back catalogue by the yeah. time they come to their first show. No, <laughs> that's that's not gonna happen. You yeah. Know? Like, it's just, it's, you know, everybody's welcome. Everyone is welcome at Amman Amarth shows. That's a great way to end. Thank yeah. you so much for chatting to us here at Knotfest today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.